All right, well, the zoo is a popular place to visit during the summer, but today what we're going to do is uh, clearly bring the zoo to you. you got a friend there, <laughs> yes, don't do. you? <laughs> this is Rick Hopefully. Schwartz from the San Diego Zoo, and he's going to show us and tell us all about the fun and exotic animals at the zoo. Aww, and we've got a look, baby. We're yes. starting off with a baby kangaroo. Yeah, this is Rue. He's going to go ahead and check out he the just lighting wants over to there. Move around exactly, and exactly. Where are you going? He's going to check things out. This is Rue. He's about a year old, so this is not full grown. He's okay. a red kangaroo, although gray in color right now. Uh -huh. They can get up to six feet tall. Weigh up to 150 pounds quite easily. He's, so he's really? going to the kitchen to yeah, get leftovers. He's like, <laughs> I heard there was food in the kitchen, and then uh, Candace had been here, and no, so he's going there. He's about th went up on, on all th three feet tall. Yeah, he's about three feet three tall. Feet tall if right you're now, stand right? up, like, yeah. kangaroos, the way they tend to move, I mean, they're getting a good shot of it right now. They're kind of mm -hmm. hunched over a little bit, tails out one side, head over the other, so they're kind of balanced. You'll notice as he walks here, you'll see two feet moving at the same time, no matter how slow or fast they're going. The yeah, way the structure of the hips and pelvic is designed, uh -huh. those are always moving together, which is actually very efficient for long-term high-speed mobility. Wow. These guys can easily oh, a little hop there go. for you. Oh, he's interested in the battery logo. Uh, 35, 40 miles an hour, and when a full-grown male, hour. when doing that, can travel great distances at that sustained speed because of the way that structure is. Yeah. Very proficient way of movement, low energy, Low energy use then allows Whoa. for the opportunity to not have a lot of heat. They'll live in environments that can get up to 120, 130 right. well, degrees. Out, uh -huh. The outback, outback in Australia yeah. is the natural habitat. Yes. And what about food? Oh, boingy, it's boingy, boingy, boingy. They're, they're herbivores. What? What? They're herbivores, so they're going to eat. Oh, look out, look out, look out. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. They're herbivores, so they're going to eat uh, primarily grasses and, and mm -hmm. so a little bit of leafy. But again, in the hot season, not much available. So they eat yeah. dry sticks and whatever they can find and want to use low energy. And for each of these animals, hopefully we can get in the defense mechanism for each one, and not clearly on this, the kangaroo, it's the, the feet. That's They're going to rear up on that back yeah. tail and kick with those back feet. Oh, boom. Yeah. Wow. So you hear about boxing wow. a lot, but they actually use their front legs more for grappling to hold on and judge distance, and they'll ah. come back up and they kick. Cartoons are all wrong. Yeah, all right. Right. You also, you I also brought something yes. I've never this ever heard this term before. Sure. Can you get in? Okay. This is called a... This is called a shingleback skink. I can see why shingleback. Right, so mm -hmm. the way the scales lay right here, it looks like a set of shingles. Okay. Turn it that way so I everyone do. can see it home a little better. But what's really cool about these guys, too, if you look at the tail, check out the tail and the yeah. head. Pretty much look the same. So right. as a predator, yeah. predator's instincts are to go for the head. They well, don't guess know which what? side to go. Which one do you go for, front they, or back? Yeah, oh, right. Right. Yeah. So that's a defense <laughs> mechanism. Exactly, it works very well. If for any reason the predator, I mean, 50-50 chance, they go for the tail. The tail can actually detach. And these guys can then go and hide. Oh, the oh, I'm going to give me a detachable tail. That yeah. is an awesome, <laughs> awesome idea. That's, but what's also that. important with this species, too, similar to the kangaroo, the environments they live in, uh, there are times where food is scarce to not existent. Mm -hmm. This is all fat storage back here. So that's energy storage they can metabolize very mm -hmm. slowly during the hot, dry season when no food is available. That's oh incredible. Look such short arms and, and the legs. Clearly, they're not moving uh, around too fast. Right. right? This is they're not a high-speed animal by any means. This is an animal that's going to be basically digging through the dirt and staying yeah. on the ground, not climbing in the trees or anything like that. And being that they are, uh, you know, what some people refer to as cold-blooded or ectothermic, mm -hmm. meaning they rely on the outside temperature. So they would sun themselves when they need to warm up and go hide under rocks then when they need and, to warm up. And the reason that you, that he's also an Australian Yes, yes. Native. All the animals we brought today are Australian outback animals. Because, yes. you should tell everybody, because you guys have a new amazing Australia exhibit. Definitely. You know, if you ever plan on coming to the San Diego Zoo, one really cool thing this year we just opened last week, quite literally, just a week ago, is our new Australian outback exhibit. And it really is to feature our koala population. We have uh, roughly 20-some um, koala out there. It's the largest breeding population outside of Australia. It's much cheaper to go to than Australia, yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. With that, then we have a lot of supporting animals around that new exhibit space. It'll be open from here on out. And so whether you come down this summer or come check us out any time of the year. All great. Yeah. You got some more to show us? Oh, we do. Okay, okay good. We're going to take a break. We'll see even more from Rick right after this. <laughs>